A new movie called Pope Francis, A Man of His Word, released into theaters on May 18, 2018, follows on the heels of a six-part CNN television series entitled Pope, The Most Powerful Man in History. The new movie promotes the view that as global instability deepens, the world desperately needs a moral authority whose message can unite humanity. Both the CNN series and the new movie present the idea that the most powerful person we can look to and the most trustworthy person that we can rely on is none other than Pope Francis. Pope Francis himself is surely doing his part to strengthen this perception. His now famous papal encyclical on climate change addresses world leaders and claims to offer sensible solutions to our world's woes. In his global journeys, Pope Francis regularly meets with representatives of the major world religions. He also dines with some of the most powerful politicians on earth. In his papal speeches, radio addresses, Twitter tweets, and in his highly publicized 2015 address to a joint session of the United States Congress, Pope Francis addresses many of humanity's most pressing issues. Pope Francis also has a unique public image. He doesn't wear a suit and a tie like other world leaders, but he is clothed in a flowing robe of pure white as he talks about God, love, peace, and helping the poor. What could possibly be wrong with that, you may be thinking. Let's have a quick look at an amazing prophecy found in chapter 13 of the last book of the Bible which is the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 13, verses 8 and 9 say this, All who dwell upon the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Verse 8 points to a time when the entire world will worship and follow a mysterious, disguised enemy of God called the beast. When this prophecy is fulfilled, Earth's teeming masses will have no idea that they are actually worshiping the beast. If they did, they wouldn't worship him. But they don't know. One reason is because the beast doesn't say, I'm the beast. Instead, this beast claims to represent God and Jesus Christ. But underneath a brilliant disguise, the Bible says, is a beast. Who is this beast? Let's look at some clues. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, in the same chapter, this is what we read. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear. His mouth was like the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Thus, this beast is really a combination of three other beasts. There's a leopard, a bear, and a lion all rolled into one. Then the dragon gives to this combination beast his power, his seat, and great authority. For those of you who are familiar with Bible prophecy, it is very clear that this verse, Revelation 13, 2, is directly linked to Daniel chapter 7 in the Old Testament, which also talks about a lion, a bear, a leopard, and a dragon-like creature. Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, plainly says that in Daniel 7, those four beasts symbolize the rise and the fall of four great historical kingdoms or nations. Daniel 7 verse 23 says, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. Verse 1 in Daniel 7 says that Daniel was living in the nation of Babylon when this prophecy was given. Historically and prophetically, those four beasts in Daniel 7, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the dragon-like creature represent the nations of Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. The beast in Revelation chapter 13 that the world worships, that is a combination of the lion, the bear, and the leopard, 
tells us that this combination beast really contains elements of ancient Babylon, ancient Persia, and ancient Greece. But here's the main point. Revelation 13 verse 2 says that the fourth creature, which was the Roman Empire, would give to the combination beast his power, his seat, and great authority. The word seat refers to a seat of government. The seat of government of the ancient Roman Empire was inside the city of Rome itself. Now, don't miss this. According to Revelation 13, verse 2, this will be the exact location where the beast's government sits too. Revelation 13, verse 2 says that the dragon gave to the beast his power, his seat, and great authority. When you put these clear pieces together, we discover that the headquarters of this combination beast will be inside the city of Rome itself. Here are some more clues. Verse 4 says that the people of the earth will say, Who is like the beast? Which means that they are amazed at the beast's power and influence. Verse 5 says that the beast was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. This means that the beast will claim great authority for itself and it will make great claims for itself. It will claim to speak for God himself and to represent him. In verse 7, it tells, the Bible tells us that it was granted to this beast to make war with the saints and to overcome them. This means that if you look at history, this beast is a persecutor of God's own people. And then verse 8, which we already read at the beginning, says that in the closing moments of time, it says that all who dwell upon the earth will worship this beast, which means that the people of the earth will respect, honor, and look to this beast for guidance and for help. If you study history carefully, you will discover that there is only one power in all of history that fits every detail of this prophecy. And it is the Roman Catholic Church system centered in the supposedly infallible authority of the Pope. It's a fact that the headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church right now is in the city of Rome itself, just as prophecy predicts. It's a fact that Roman popes do make great claims for themselves, that they alone represent God on earth. It's a fact that popes also give themselves titles that no other religious leaders use, such as the Pope, such as the Holy Father, and such as His Holiness. It's also a fact that when the Roman Catholic Church ruled Europe during the Dark Ages, it did persecute millions of Bible-believing Christians who refused to acknowledge the authority of popes. Many of these Christians were horribly tortured by the Inquisition and burned at the stake. It's also a fact that the Pope is now being looked to as the most powerful religious authority on earth. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Yet Revelation chapter 13 verses 8 and 9 predict that not everyone will worship the beast. I'll read these verses again. All who dwell upon the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. The Lamb is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Lamb also has a special book called the Book of Life, in which are the individual names of those who follow and worship him above any mortal man, including Pope Francis. Those in the Lamb's Book of Life love Jesus. They love His Holy Word. They have repented of their sins, and they have trusted Him alone. 
they have finely tuned Holy Spirit led spiritual ears and they hear what God says in his holy prophecy. Even if it's not popular, they carefully listen to his voice. What about you? Are you listening to what God says in his word? Which side will you be on? Will you be on the side of the beast or on the side of the lamb? Which side are you on right now? Jesus Christ is the lamb who has been slain. According to the Bible, he loves Catholics, he loves Protestants, Republicans, Democrats, Jews, Muslims, atheists, and everyone else. According to this book, he loves you and he died for you and for all of your sins 2,000 years ago on a cruel cross outside Jerusalem. No mortal man can do that, including Pope Francis. I urge you to give your life to Jesus, to study his prophecies, and to get ready for his soon return. If you do, you'll never be sorry. You will be happy forever in God's eternal kingdom. To learn more about Bible prophecy, future events, and the love of Jesus Christ, Whitehorse Media recommends our popular The Time is at Hand information packet, containing 12 pocketbooks, three DVDs, and one paperback copy of the book, The Great Controversy Between Jesus Christ and Satan. We also recommend a newly released, fully illustrated, hardback version of The Great Controversy, which contains colorful pictures of world events connected to Bible prophecy. To order either of these resources, or both, call 1-800-782-4253 or order online at whitehorsemedia.com. Whitehorse Media is a ministry that exists by faith in God. Donations are greatly appreciated. Thank you and may God richly bless you and your family.